Good morning, everyone. So good to see all of you. I think all the good-looking people in Penang are in this hall right now. Don't you think so? Um, I'm, I'm just so blessed and what an honor and privilege it is to be with you this morning. Um, I, I see um, we have all ages here, from the youngest. How many of you think the kids are so cute? Oh, I still have one more. I, I have chance. I have a two years old. Probably still have chance to enroll. <laughs> oh, it's a bit far. Let's see how. Anyway, um, we have all ages over here. We have young families. Uh, uh, we have also uh, people who are slightly more elderly, full of wisdom over here. Why not we just give everyone a big, big hand this morning? Just a welcome. Um, yep. I just believe that the world would be a better place if we have more children. Don't you think so? They laugh so naturally. Like, you know, they don't have to plan their laughter. And, you know, we had such a good time this morning. And I believe that uh, God wants us to learn from them. Uh, that's why this morning I would like to share with you a, a sermon titled, Children of God. Uh, so today we want to learn from the children, although they are not with us, they are also learning something over there. And uh, this morning, I, I believe that um, we got to be a bit less serious. Is that okay? I want to just turn to your neighbor and say, uh, let's be... Uh, okay, why not just tell our neighbor, don't be too serious. <laughs> Alright, shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, even as we look at the children this morning, God, we see your love. We see your glory uh, in their lives, through their lives, Lord. We thank you for the teachers, uh, the volunteers that have nurtured them. We thank you for all the parents that have raised them up so well. And this morning, God, we ask that you teach us because you are our Father. So, Lord, speak to us, bless us, God. We commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. For this part, I really admire you. Um, I see your logo, church logo, is City on a Hill, which is the same um, Bible verse that our church started with. Uh, we are called City Light, a uh, city on a hill that cannot be hidden. So we are brothers and sisters together. I just want to bring you greeting from our church uh, and we hope to worship together again very soon. Just now I was sharing that, you know, when we look at the world that we live in today, there is economic crisis. There is political instability. We see wars happening, right? Russia, Ukraine, then Israel. There's just so many things happening. This morning, I would like all of us to imagine a world a world that is different. What if we have a world that is designed and run based on the idea to create a better future for the children? Imagine a world that you have children full of laughter, full of joy, full of curiosity. Imagine a world that, you know, every day when I finish work and I go back home, right, the first thing that I anticipate to see is my children's face, especially the two years old one right, right now. Just very unpredictable because you get to see different version of her as she grows up. You know, her name is Sion. And when, when I look at her face, right, you know, I just never get bored looking at the face because I believe that God loves the children. That's why they make him, uh, that's why he made them so cute. Don't you think so? When you love something, you just want them to look so good. You see, every baby, every new life that is born, they just look so good, so unique, yet so wonderful. How many of you here, you have children? Right? Today, when you go back home, you know, can you tell your children, you still look so good to me every single day? Just do that. And I believe they will be so blessed. This morning, I would like to bring all of us to the Scripture and see what the Bible talks about the children. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. 
You can also refer to the screen, Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16. Mark, Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16. The Bible says here, people were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. You see, don't be too serious. <laughs> the disciples, right, thinking they are doing Jesus a favor to be the security guard. Hey, don't let kids come, okay? We have VIP here. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me. We should have more children here in the church, right? Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. You know, Jesus is making a very important point here. He said that unless we become like little children, we will never enter into the kingdom of God. That means the kingdom of God, the heaven is designed and prepared for people who are childlike. That we got, no matter how old we are, we got to learn how to still carry the heart of a little child in us. Let little children come to me. Do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to them. I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom like a child will never enter it. Friends, today, we grow old. But you see, don't lose that child, the childlikeness in us. Because a lot of times, it's not the age that matters. You know, George Bernard Shaw said this. He said, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Uh, let me repeat that again. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. I think it's in the, on the slide. Now, for this park, Baptist Church, you have a word park in your church name. So this is a place that we should have a good time. Don't you think so? I checked on dictionary, you know, today, this morning I checked. What does fetis mean? Do, do you know what does fetis, the word, mean? Sorry? <laughs> I saw the word handsome. That's why I say all the good-looking people are here. Fetis Park, right? We come to this community. Do you know that God loves Fetis Park? God loves Penang? And He has created this place to be a park. Do you know when God created the world, He created the world firstly, he started with a garden where we can take a stroll, we can enjoy the friendship with God, where we are in this perfect environment. But then sin came and it was destroyed. But you see, that doesn't change God's original purpose, that He wants to have a relationship with us. And the best way to have a relationship is that we need to receive his kingdom like a child. You see, a child, right, will never feel they need to earn something. You know, no children, if your children come to you and say, Dad, can I drink the milk in the fridge because I have already done my homework? Please, I've done my homework already. Please give me my milk. A child will never need to do that, right? I hope your children don't have to do that. Because they know that they know whether they do their homework or not, they can drink the milk in the fridge. They just have that simple faith. You see, if you go in a city, right, just imagine when, when I was visiting Japan, there was this old city that, that you hardly find many children. Actually, a lot of cities are aging today. And you realize something is missing in the city, in the nation, when we don't have children because people are just so serious people cannot have fun anymore and today children teach us how to have fun even drama right though they were nervous but they were still laughing 
right? Though they, they forgot the script, but they just had a, such a good time. Because to them, it's not about performance. It's about enjoying the moment. So friends, today, Jesus says, we should receive God's kingdom like little children. That's the requirement. Like a little child, because the kingdom of God is created for people like that. But the problem is this. We all want to have a good time. We want to have fun. We want to really enjoy the world that God has created for us. But at the same time, we are also pursuing, we want to pursue success. We want to be great in the sight of people. Now, this is one day, right? The disciples that followed Jesus, they couldn't quite understand the whole thing. They asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 to 5, that time Jesus, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Can you see like children, they don't care who is the greatest, but we adults, we want to be the manager, we want to be the management, we want to be greatest. So they asked Jesus, Jesus, what is the way to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him, Jesus, and placed the child among them. Just imagine this is a meeting for adults. And Jesus called a child, come, come and sit with us. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Jesus is the king in the kingdom of heaven. And he says the greatest is to be like a child. Whoever that welcomes a child welcomes the king. Isn't it amazing how we look at children, how we honour them, how we see them matters to God. And he says the way we relate to them is the way we relate to our king. And that's why today, all of us, I pray that we will all become like children. Not in terms of immaturity, but in terms of childlikeness. That we become, become like little children to really have these three points that I want to share with you. How can we be changed? Okay, because Jesus says, unless you change and become like little children. So the question is, how can we change and become like little children so that we can enjoy and receive the kingdom of God. Three things I would like to share with you very quickly. Number one, it's faith. The ability to believe. You see, children, they believe easily. They don't need you to bring up all the facts they didn't need to, to, to show, say, Dad, what are we eating for lunch? Dad will say, McDonald's. They will, not, they will not ask, Dad, show me your proposal. How are we getting there? The time? Show me your bank account. <laughs> you don't need to convince them because they have simple faith. Because I know my dad. I know my mom. They have always kept their promise so I can believe. And they go back home, right? They don't have to think about how to earn the favour from parents because they know that they belong. Friends, in order for us to experience God's love, let's not complicate things. Like, God, show me, show me everything. Show me that you love me. Show me that you love me more than my neighbour. Don't have to make comparison like that. Because... We need to be like little children to believe and to trust. The children know that they are loved not because of what they have done. They are loved because of who they are. They are their parents' precious children. Friends, that is the same as well for all of us. Today, God loves you 
not because of what you have done, not because you are a manager in a certain company, not because you have done your PhD, not because you have acquired knowledge that you are so smart that God must love you. It's not. God loves you today because you are His children. He has created you. The Bible says that He knows how many hair you have. And even before you were born in your mother's womb, He has already known you. Just like, you know, my kids will ask me silly questions and say, Dad and Mom, like, how did we come? You know, you know why, why, how, how, how did we grow up? Because the first few years, they, don't, they cannot remember much, right? Then we would tell them, oh, we bought this for you. Look at the picture, you see? What you have now, Mei Mei also have, Coco also have. They look at us and wow, we are so loved. The faith to believe. Friends today, have we lost the ability to believe? Have we lost the simplicity to trust? You know, our kids, they don't really need phone. They know we'll pick them up from school. I know once in a while, we may be late. <laughs> but they know that they know we will pick them up from school. The simplicity to trust. Children also have the capacity to imagine. You know, my daughter loves to paint. She will take out a piece of paper every time, right? When she's free, she will paint something that she imagined. She will imagine her one day having a house next to her brother. And now with an addition, she will draw another house like three of us will stay together happily ever after. And she told me, I'm not going to get married. <laughs> I don't like boys. But that is who she is right now. But the ability to imagine the future. Adults, we got to learn how to imagine again. It's not just going through every day's routine, completing our tasks. There is no more expectation. Why not you expect God to do something in your life? Why not you believe that God will bless your family, your children, that He is a good Father? So the f- first point is, let's have faith like the little children. Number two is the sense of wonder. You know kids, right? They can go to the same Lego shop, my son, and he will never get that. Wow, there's something new again. Wow. It's the adult say, "Ah, it's all money, money I have to pay. (laughs) My kids will go to the same zoo in Taiwan, you know, because my my son's uh, godparents are in Taiwan. So he will go to the same zoo again and again. And wow, this is nice. Woo. Never get tired. The sense of wonder. When was the last time you used the word wonderful? When was the last time you enjoy your fried kway teow from the same store and say, wow, this is wonderful? You won't appreciate it until you leave Penang. I just have to be away for a week to come back and to taste my first plate of char kway teow again. Wonderful. You know God has always blessed us with His blessing. You go back to the same wife, please say to her, you are wonderful. <laughs> Don't say, God, I need a new wife. Okay, that's wrong. <laughs> if we can appreciate that, then we will be able to experience more of God's work in our life. We just open our eyes a bit. Don't say, let's not say like an old man. Oh, I've seen it. I've heard it. Nothing new for me. Let's not lose the wonder because happiness comes when we don't lose the sense of wonder. You know, kids, especially small kids, we learn from them. We think we want to buy them nice clothes and all that. Do you know what they want the most? Is parents being with them. They don't want things. They want people. They don't want work. They they are not focusing on work, but relationship. A lot of times we focus on getting the work done. But do you know the best gift that you can give your kids is not to send them to many, many classes and schools and tuition, but the relationship that you have with them. Children, they know who loves them. 
they know what is kindness and goodness. A lot of times when we are in the world, we value somebody by their achievement. So let's learn from the children. Focus on what matters. When you have the sense of wonder, you will enjoy the world that God has created to you. Do you know that the only person who gave Jesus the five fish, sorry, five loaves and two fish, is a boy. Oh, 5,000 people. I cannot believe that there's only one boy who brought food. But I know the one boy, he has a sense of wonder. Ah, it's okay. Pass it to Jesus, see what he can do. And Jesus used that five loaves and two fish and make a miracle to feed 5,000. I believe if we can allow God, even if you only have five loaves and two fish, God can make something wonderful in your life. Children have no problem sharing. You know, it's when they see adults are not sharing, then they learn, okay, maybe I don't share. <laughs> right? We Asians, we are very scared of sharing. But if we can just learn how to be more generous, our children will continue to be generous because the kingdom of God is an upside-down kingdom. It's a ch- kingdom made for children, you know, childlikeness. So whenever we need to learn again, Let's see how children behave. We have the last point. It's a good news. Is it okay? Can you give me 10 minutes more? Pastor, uh, am I on time? Okay, 10 minutes. Okay. All right, the third point. It's humility. Humility to learn. You know, children go to school. They just learn whatever the teachers taught them. You see the little children here. For one, right, I must really clap for them because I know that I know I cannot perform like them anymore. Right? Just so happy. Memorizing all the script. And just speak it out so confidently. I cannot do that. But because they have the humility to learn, they were able to do it. Friends, no matter how old we grow, if we can just keep the humility, I want to learn. I want to learn from little children. I want to learn from my kids how to draw, how to paint. You know, nowadays, kids are very good with internet. Maybe you can learn from them how to use the internet. And you teach them the values on on the internet. They teach you how to use. You teach them how to benefit from the internet. If we only learn from the children, they, a lot of times in their life, they may not speak a lot, but they are listening and seeing a lot. If all of us just learn how to listen more, how to see and observe more, I believe we will continue to grow. We become old when we stop growing. Right? When we think, I have known it all. I've got all the experience. That's when we become really, really old. It's when we say, hey, I want to learn again. You know, my mom, during the pandemic, she was 70 years old. She was learning how to make videos because she needs to help with her church back in Kedah. 70 years old, she's still learning. She's still growing. You know, in, in the Bible, we realize that God only instituted two entities in the human history. One, number one, it's family. God loves your family more than you, you do. Number two, God instituted church. It is also family. God's family. As we come to a close, I want to assure you from the Word of God that God is our provider. Do you know He loves your family? He wants your family to be well. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy families today. We see today the curse of the society is that families, marriages are broken. But God is the restorer. He wants to restore your family. He wants to restore your marriages that you don't have to endure your marriage but to enjoy because it is designed by God. But the key is to come back. To come back to God because He instituted marriage. He would teach us how to do well. Friends, you know, a lot of times when we, it comes to growing up like little children, we think it's about what we can 
speak to them and teach them. But you know what? Our example, our actions speak louder than our words. And it is okay if we want to see God works in our families. Can we all agree together today? If we want God to bless our family, the key is to be like little children, to have, first one, faith, sense of wonder, and humility. That includes us sometimes when we have to apologize to our children for not being a good example. I don't know if you lost your temple before. I, I lost my cool, you know, a, a few times where I had to apologize to my children. I said, children, sorry. I think I shouldn't have said this. I have made a mistake. Can you forgive me? And you realize that although they didn't express a lot, but they know that we all can make mistakes. We should be humble to learn from each other. So, today, as we come to a close, I want to end by saying this. Jesus teaches to honor the children, right? To welcome them. Children are not half adults. It's not 50%. Okay, you are not an adult yet. I honor you 50%. No, they are a full human. In fact, if we continue to invest properly into their lives, I believe they will come and grow up to change the world. Yes, the children will change the future of the world. But they need us to honour them, to respect them, to love them and to nurture them. Don't let the internet teach them. Don't pass all the responsibility to teach them to our teachers only. Because teachers teach knowledge. Parents teach character. Parents teach values. So, one day, somebody came. I want to read this final Bible verse to you. And with that, I will close. Can I have the um, worship team to come forward? Thank you. Matthew chapter 21. Here, one day, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple. That was before Jesus went up to the cross. And the Bible says that he healed them. When the chief priests and teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. What happened here? Jesus healed blind eyes. Right? Jesus healed the lame. People who could not walk came in a wheelchair. Those days, they didn't have a wheelchair. But those that could not walk now can walk. The Bible says they saw the wonderful things, but they did not say wonderful. They were angry that the children were praising God. Hosanna to the son of David. You know, sometimes when we grow up, we major on the minor. We are so concerned how children behave. We are so concerned whether they are right or wrong. And we forget to praise God for what God is doing. And here, so they wanted Jesus to rebuild the children. But you know, Jesus is a lover of children. Jesus said, do you hear what these children are saying? You know, you must listen to the children, not just judge them. If we can uh, be less judgmental toward the next generation, I think we will be a better person. Over here, Jesus says, do you hear what these children are saying? They ask him, right? And Jesus replied, have you never read from the lips of children and infants you, Lord, have called forth your praise? Jesus said, yes, you have heard what they said, but have you ever read that 
from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. Do you know God wants to use children to praise Him? Today, the performance is not just to show forth their talents, but also show forth God's goodness in their life. That God has a purpose for them, that they praise God through their talent. And Jesus was actually quoting Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. It says, Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. What is Jesus saying here? Jesus is quoting that scripture and say, the children out of their lips and their mouths as they praise God, he's quoting Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. He says, that is to be a stronghold against your enemies, to silence the foe and also the avenger. Meaning, the praise of our children is a very powerful weapon. The devil wants to come and steal and kill and destroy the next generation. But the weapon, for this part, Baptist, the weapon is to get our children to praise God. And it is for us to be like little children again, to praise God. I really believe with all my heart that God has called this community here to be a light of the city, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. But Jesus says, Let's not be like this religious leader. You know, they were upset when the children were making noise, praising God. But they did not really listen to what they were saying. They were praising God. They were celebrating God's goodness. You know, how amazing that is. The children actually realized that Jesus was the son of David before this religious leader. Because they had faith, they had a sense of wonder, they had the humility of little children. Today, unless we become like little children, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's just that simple faith to trust God. Beyond our knowledge, beyond our experience. I wonder how many of us this morning, you learned something. You know, God used little children to teach us a lesson, to humble us. Yes, children are not perfect, but there's something that we should learn from. You see, our Christian faith is not a be better kind of religion. Oh, now you become a believer, you become a better version of yourself. It's not. Jesus says, unless you are born again, unless you become like children again. It's not being better, learning something only, but it is to be transformed by God on the inside of us and say, God, I want to come to you like little children. You know, when children come, they don't have to hesitate. They run. They run. You know, I love to play hide and seek with my children. Not that I can hide. <laughs> my house is not very big. But I just love to see children seeking. That's why Jesus, God says, seek my face, right? And when we find Him, He will be found because He has never left us. I pray that all of us here we will seek God. We will run to Him because He is always, He has always been waiting for us. Amen. Shall we rise to our feet this morning as we sing this song? As the team leads us, and we will pray at the end of the song. But as the team sing this song, can we just sing from our heart and respond to God's love? Before the world began, you were on his mind, and every tear you cry 
is precious in his eyes because of his great love he gave his only son and everything was done so you would come before the world began before the world began you were on his mind and every tear you cry is precious in his eyes because of his great love he gave his only son and everything was done so you is small broken hearts broken lives he will take them all the power of the word the power of his blood and everything was done so you would go before the world began before the world began his mind and every tear you cry is precious in his eyes because of his great love he gave his only son and everything was done so you would come come to the father gift is small broken hearts broken lives he will take them all the power of the word the power of his blood that everything was done so you would come come to the father A broken hearts, broken lives, he will take them all. The power of the word, power of his blood, and everything was done so you would come. Come to the Father. Though your gift is small, broken hearts, broken lives, He will take them all. The power of the Word, the power of His blood, and everything was done so you would come. The small hit. Today, God is present in this place. I believe God is speaking to your heart right now. God is saying to you, children, no matter how old you have become, you are still my children. And today, God is saying to you, I'm not looking for big gifts. I'm not looking for your money, your success. I'm not looking for the good things that you can do for me. But our Father in heaven is saying to you, all you need to do is to bring your heart to God because He sees your tears. He sees your joy. He sees the deepest part of your soul. He knows how difficult it has been for you. Even when no one understood and you felt that you were lonely, alone, and nobody could really understand what you were carrying on your shoulder. God is saying, I'm your father. 
would you let me help you? Would you let me into your heart? Would you let me carry your burden for you? I will wash away your sins. I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new heart. I will give you a fresh start in Jesus Christ. I wonder how many of us here this morning, you say, God, I want to come to you like little children. I want to believe again. I do not want to let my experience in the past stop me. God, I want to come to you just like how a child will come to his father and say, I want you. Do you know when everything falls apart, all you want is to be in the embrace of your heavenly father. And God wants to hold your hand and walk with you every single day of your life. Today, would you respond to God? It's by opening your heart. While all eyes closed or all head bowed this morning, would you give me this privilege to pray, lead you in prayer, to tell God, God, I want to come to the Father. If this is you, while all eyes are closed, I want to invite you to raise your hand gently and put it down, just to indicate that you want to come to God as children. Perhaps you have been a believer for a long time, but I always feel that coming to God is to work for Him. It's very tiring. But today, will you come to God like little children once again and say, God, I just want my father. I just want to be a child again. Just enjoy my father's presence. If this is you, at the count of three, would you just raise your hands to God? And God is watching your heart. God is observing and He will touch your heart. I'm going to start counting now. One, two, three. All the children of God, lift up your hands. I see hands, hands, hands all over. Would you just keep your hands raised for a while as we pray? I wonder how many of us here, as we close our eyes, you just do not want to miss this chance to come back to God. Everything was done so you would come. Everything was done so you would come. Let's pray. And as I say this prayer, you can just follow this prayer softly. Let's pray from your heart. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you as little child. You are my Father. I need you. Bring me back to your presence. I want to believe like a child once again. I want to open my heart to you, God. Take away my heart that are dirty. Take away my heart that is polluted. God, wash my heart clean. Give me a new heart, Lord. I want to follow you because you are my Father. I thank you so much for loving me the way I am, God. I am your child. You are my Father forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everyone say, Amen.